So you want to know how to get hit, and then hit back. Well, the newly updated health extension is exactly what you need. You just install the extension, add it as a behavior, and you'll have access to some pretty useful tools. If you just want to use it to track health, then you just set the health in the behavior, and then you can use these two actions, apply damage to object, and heal object, and then the condition is dead. But we're going to use the extension for more than that. We're using the current and maximum health and shield values for the UI, and we've set up this pretty dramatic hit. And if I speed this up, you'll see that when the health reaches zero, the character dies. If we go over to the event sheet, you'll see that we have this event, with the conditions if the player is in collision with the saw, if the animation isn't hit, and if the player is not dead. Then we use the action apply 10 points of damage to the player, and then set the animation to hit and play a sound effect. Then for the actual motion, we abort any current jump, so we don't have anything weird happening, and then we disable the platformer behavior, so the player can't move or jump in the middle of getting hurt, and then we add a permanent force to the player using the angle between the saw and the player. And that way, no matter where the player hits the saw, they're going to get knocked in the appropriate direction. And to get this expression, don't panic, just use the expression builder. And then next, in the event, we have a section for text object, where we create this text object at the position of the player, and then change that text object to display the amount of damage done in the above action. And then we use two tweens, one to make the text rise, and the other to fade. And when the fading is done, it will delete the object. And then lastly, we have the freeze frame. We change the time scale to 0.1, wait a fraction of a second, and then turn it back to 1, which is normal speed. And then when the hit animation finishes playing, we stop that permanent force that's applied to the object, and then we give them back their controls by reactivating the platformer behavior. And you'll see above that all of the controls and animations only work if the platform behavior is activated. And then if we go back down, you'll see the death event. This triggers if the player is dead, and what it does is take away the platform behavior and change the animation to dead. And then when the dead animation finishes, you delete the player. And now that we've done that, let's start playing with some of the other features of the extension. Starting with the cooldown. This is your iframes, or invincibility frames that you get after being hit. Now to make this work, we needed to add this condition to check to see if the player was just damaged. Otherwise, everything is the way that it was. So now... And the next feature of this behavior that we're going to show is the chance to dodge. So I'll set that to 0.5, and for this I need to create a new sub-event, where if the player just dodged incoming damage, we use the same text event as before, but we'll change this to dodge. And then next, I'll add the conditions is damage cooldown active, invert it, and then once. And so now the event will trigger, and if we dodge, we do this event, and if we don't and we get hit, then we do this event. And that looks like this. And now the next feature is health regeneration. So here we have a delay for health regeneration, and the rate. So when I get hit now, or now, at some point when I get hit, there we go. That's not a rounded number. To fix that, we just need to go to the event and slot in round right here. And now when I get hit, the display is increasing by integers. Now before I go to the next thing, I'm going to turn off dodge and then go down to shield. I'm going to set the maximum to 20, and if I set a duration, then it will last to that point, and then go back to zero. But then I can add a shield regeneration, with a delay and a rate, just like before. Now if I start the game... Oh. There we go. Now if I start the game, and run into this, you'll see that the shield is going down, but the event isn't triggering. So I need to add another condition here, for if the shield is damaged and then put both of those inside of an OR condition. So if one or the other triggers, the event will happen. And then for the text display, I need to add how much damage is being done to the shield. So it's going to show me the shield and the health. And for this, it's just easier to use the expression builder. 
but now when we get hit, that damage event is triggering. And this extension can be used on the player, or on any other object. So let's show how to give damage. If we give the behavior to the trunk enemy, and then copy down the event from the player, we can slot that into the event where the tree is in collision with the bullet object and is switching its animation to hit. And then switch out the word player for trunk in all of the events. And now, when we shoot the enemy, and they switch to that hit animation, we're taking away health until they die. And you can modify these variables on the fly with events, or you can create a bunch of different enemies with preset health, armor, dodge chance, and things like that. If you want to learn more about this extension, there's an example for it in Engine that shows all of the different components and what they can do. And if you would like to know how to set up enemy AI for your game, then check out this video.